Hey everybody, this is DSLAC67. I am going to do a quick uh, review of my latest build. Uh, this obviously is not uh, my original White Spy quad. I have since then built another quad based on the Hover Things HT FPV frame. Um, as you can see, the frame has a lot of uh, cool features. The most obvious is the unique design or shape of the quad. The quad itself is almost has like a bug look to it. Um, it's not just for looks. Obviously, the biggest advantage is keeping the front arms in a swung out position out of the way of your camera setup. So here I have a GoPro 2. Um, and this is a little hokey probably looking. I'm using some cloth and I do have some sarbothane underneath the cloth as well to kind of help with vibrations. I'm going to be changing all that up and, and building another housing that will fit on top of the tab that the HTFPV comes with. See if I can isolate some of the vibrations even more for windy days. Um, anyway, it's the HTFPV frame that I've rebuilt everything on. I still use the GoPro 2 for my video recording. For the actual video that gets transmitted to my goggles, my goggles, um, I use a ready uh, made RC 420, RMRC 420 um, CCD camera. And I only, I probably recommend the 480 or the 520 line. The, the, the number represents the lines of resolution. So I purchased this when it was on sale. I think I got it for like 59 bucks or 65 bucks, something like that. Anyway, the reason why I use that over the GoPro is the GoPro's wide angle view um, is pretty, it's not the best for FPV flying. So you could cable this directly to your video transmitter and receive that uh, view on your goggles, but uh, I don't find that as easy to fly with. Anyway, so I do recommend getting a, another CCD camera for your actual FPV view to your goggles or your LCD screen, whatever it is you use to to view while you're flying. Um, now the build, as you can see, I have a NASA. I use the NASA flight controller, and uh, the NASA also has a unit called a VCU or VU. Um, what it does is your power from your battery source plugs into this. This then regulates the power and whatnot to the NASA. So you don't have to worry about BECs or whatnot on the ESCs feeding power to your NASA. A lot of acronyms here, but you'll have to, if you don't know what they are, you're going to have to look them up to get all the acronyms. Um, also, it has a very powerful LED on it that shows you when you're in attitude mode, manual mode, or when you're running low on battery, it'll flash red. It's very bright. You can see it easy. Well, at night anyway. When it's flying FPV, I can't really see it, so it doesn't matter. Um, the new build... I went ahead and uh, used Turnigy Plush 30 amp ESCs that you'll see underneath there. Um, they work great with the NASA. Set them on medium on your timing. I don't use high setting on the timing and everything works great. Uh, I also changed out to the um, NTM 2826 motors. So as you'll see here, get a little zoom in there on the model. Got those from Hobby King. Great motors. I fell in love with them. Um, prop adapters or NTM prop adapters. I'm using the Gem Fan carbon filled 8 inch props right now. Uh, I like the 8 inch props and I like the carbon filled. They're, they're really sturdy. They're not, uh, they're not as flexible. I don't get as much flex. And they're pretty durable and real tough. They also um, mount really easily to the prop adapter shaft without the need of any kind of a uh, ring or whatnot to take out the slack. They fit nice and snug on the shaft. Um, let's see. Next I guess I'll show some of my uh, FPV gear itself. So you'll see these two components here and here are the two components to my OSD, my on-screen display. And the OSD that I use is the Easy 
OSD by Immersion RC. This is actually the, the GPS component of the EZSD. Uh, the video feed goes into here. It gets overlaid with the on-screen display. Um, another component of the EZOSD is the unit that measures the power. So all the, battery for the power from the battery comes into this unit. This unit then can measure your uh, MOS that you've used, the current voltage and whatnot, so you know if you're dropping down into you know 10 and a half volts or so, you know you're running low on power. Anyway, it feeds into there. The battery plugs in here. This feeds into the power distribution board. There's a power distribution board, board which was like a $6 add-on from uh, Hover Things. You can see it kind of inside the frame there. That's where all my ESCs and power coming from the EZOSD, which comes from the battery. Everything plugs into this power distribution board. And then from there, <clears throat> everything goes to you know, all the different components, the NASs, VCU, ESCs that power the motor, etc., etc. Um, the other thing I like about the frame, talking about the frame a little bit more, the where, how the battery is set up and configured, um, it's, you can slide it to find your perfect center of gravity. And um, I know where my center of gravity is. I measured it, and on these 3300, uh, 3300 ma nanotechs, it's right about in the middle of, the, there's, an, there's lettering here, it's right in about the middle of the N. Um, so that spells hover things if the battery wasn't on. So I pretty much know if I keep my battery there, tighten these down, um, and I'm set from a center of gravity perspective. So I talked about the OSD components. I also have a 5.8 gigahertz, 600 milliwatt um, video transmitter from Immersion RC as well, which I bought from ReadyMade RC. Also have a cloverleaf here, a blue beam that you'll see from an antenna perspective, and the cloverleafs are a huge improvement, I think, over the standard uh, pigtail or dipole. Uh, antennas, um, better reception at all various different angles when you're flying so you get a lot less distortion or cutouts on your video. Uh, I think the other thing uh, worth noting is I I use a Turnigy 9X controller and I upgraded it to the Frisky LRS long range module which uh, replaces the stock transmitter and the controller and with a more powerful unit and thus I upgraded to the Frisky receiver which has a lot longer uh, antenna as you can see a lot longer antenna which um, also improves the signal range for flying um, so that is about it. Just kind of give the quad a spin around. Nice low profile. Fly very low, very fast, but also very stable. These uh, these arms and whatnot, I think, make this quadcopter about the size of a 550 or so, maybe a 500, uh, which is a little bit larger wingspan than a 450. So I think that helps out with its stability as well. And my goggles, I just use the Fat Shark Predator kit from Hobby King. Um, it comes embedded with a 5.8 gigahertz receiver, um, battery, strap. It comes with everything that you need. Obviously, I'm using a cloverleaf as well for reception. And a lot of people compare these, you know, between the Predator versus the Fat Shark base versus aviators, whatnot. Um, these don't have as good a field of view, so the LCDs are a little bit smaller, but they're more high res. So it's kind of personal preference, I guess. But a lot of people wonder why I'm flying 5.8 instead of 1.3 gigahertz, like my backups, uh, my backpack setup. And that's really <clears throat> because of ease, ease and functionality. I don't really, most of the time where I'm flying, I like to just show up pop my goggles on, plug in my battery, 
and start flying and to be honest with you I probably 75 percent of the time I don't need the extra range and penetration that uh, my 1.3 gigahertz setup gives me so that's about it it's not a complete build I guess you'd say uh, start to finish but it does give you a good idea of all my components and you know how everything looks and how it's all set up on this uh, really awesome frame design so I'll leave it at that peace